All right. Put your hands together as I welcome here our mommy, Mrs. Fumilayo, or money, Jay. You are not clapping. Okay. Put your hands together as I bring up stage Professor Mrs. Kende Taiwo. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Please hold your lips. Hold your lips. This is a session that is very important, and I believe that the Lord will use our moments for us today. We are going to be discussing walking in wisdom with your parents. Walking in wisdom with your parents. Walking in wisdom with your parents. And since Wednesday, I believe there have been so many sessions about wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And I believe you have learned so much. For you to have such comprehensive notes submitted there, I believe that you must have been so much impacted. So today we are going to be hearing from our mommy. We are going to be channeling the um, discussion to us some uh, questions that we have here, which we guide our mommies to... Uh, you know, discuss with us about how we can work with our parents in wisdom. This is not to, I mean, streamline, but just to, for us to have a guide, all right? And I know that one, two, three, four, five persons among the teenagers will also have questions. So if you have questions as this session is going on, please put your question down legibly. You understand what I mean? Make sure your writing is readable. So put your questions down, okay, legibly, and give to any of the mentors. The mentor, you say, a mentor, please, we will need you in the auditorium. Mentors, please, we will need you in the auditorium and ushers. Put your question legibly in it and submit. We will try and treat a few of the questions. All right. Uh, we are talking about working in wisdom with our parents, ma. Mass, Okay. Uh, I want to start with, in um, career-wise, because we are teenagers, we are growing, we are still learning, we are in school, we are studying, and all. Uh, in choosing a career for yourself as a teenager, and uh, getting as much education as you desire in life, uh, how can we undo parents who... It's a two-way question, Mas. I think I will direct the question to our mommy, Professor Mrs. Kendi Taiwo. How can we undo parents who hardly believe in education? Probably because they are not educated, and oh, it could be for any reason, but they hardly believe in education. So when a child maybe struggles to finish GSS3 or SS3, Without even writing why they begin to tell the parent, the student that a little cannot to. And this is a child that really wants to study. And it, our parents are still the ones sponsoring us. Maybe they are beginning to say, Ito cannot to. It's time for you to get a job you are doing. Lo washe, lo koshe, you know. Some people they will say, go and join uh, auxiliary, you know, all of those things. And you as a teenager, you know what you want. Maybe you are hoping to go to university and study engineering. You wish to proceed. How do you handle uh, such parents? That is one. And still on career, ma. We have some parents that still believe that they are the ones that must choose a career for their children. Maybe a child who has seen in, in himself a potential to be a lawyer. And the parent is insisting that he must go to science class because the neighbor's daughter is also in science class, and therefore must study medicine. How can you as a teenager who has been taught of the Lord that you should obey your parents and respect them and all that, how can you handle such a situation uh, with wisdom? That's the question. Thank you. It's the Lord. Hey, Damilomo. Now, the first question, I doubt if it's applicable to anybody here. 
Is there anybody here who has a parent that does not want you to go to school? One lower, but you are too shy to raise your hands. Okay, let's assume that all of you have parents that want you to go to school. That is something to thank God for. Children, I hope you understand. Appreciate your parents for allowing you to go to school. Some parents, some children want to go to school. Their parents cannot afford it. It's okay, please stop clapping. Stop clapping. When we are praying, you will pray for your parents, thanking God for them, for allowing you to go to school, and for supporting your education. Is education free? Aha. So we need to be grateful. The Bible says, in all things we do what? Give thanks. Now, assuming you have a parent that does not want you to go to school, and you want to go to school. How many of you have watched the film of Pastor Adeboe? You have watched the film. Okay, who will tell me what happened in that film? Yes, come and tell us. Just stay there quickly. Oh yeah, quick, quick. When Pastor Adeboe was a very young child, he cherishes education, he loves education, and always wants to go to school, but his parents do not have the, they don't have the money to take him to school. So, Pastor, he avoided uh, it for three days, and his mother and mother have to tell the father. The father sold his lamp, his favorite lamp, because to let his son to go to school. Please clap for him. For all of you who have watched that film, he said Pastor Adeboye did not eat for how many days? He did not take Christmas shirt and shoes. Do you remember? How many of you are willing to sacrifice? To show your seriousness, Adeboye showed his seriousness. Our auntie said, you have read up to secondary school. In the secondary school, what did you get? Were they begging you to read your books? Or you were just sleeping and waking? It is your seriousness that will show that you mean business. I hope you are hearing. Pastor Adeboye said, don't give me Christmas clothes. Don't give me food. All I want is school. He showed that he was serious. Then, apart from telling your parents how serious you are, I mean, there's a girl right now, she's nine years old. When they ask her to read, she will not read. So the mother told her she was going to repeat. When she heard that, she found her a long, sorry, long year note, textbook, book boy, wait only, which means she could have done it before. Okay? The lifestyle you live will let your parents know whether you are serious or not. If your lifestyle does not comply with someone who wants to go to school, they will not waste their money. That is one. Another thing is you can look for the uh, friend of your parents. Eba mi ba mommy soro. Ejo eba mi be daddy. Or you talk to your pastor. Are you hearing me? You have talked to your parents and they say they can't afford it. Talk to an older person, maybe their friend or their pastor, to help you talk to them. And also, I will say pray to God. Do what? Pray to God. God is able to change their hearts. The Bible says the hearts of kings are where? Ah, eh, hey, more scriptures. The hearts of kings, thank you, are in the hands of God and he turns it the way he likes. So God can turn the hearts of your parents to what uh, you want. 
Then the second question, if your parents insist you must do one course and you don't want to do that course. Let me tell you, from my own experience, I am an engineer. My husband is an engineer. Our first son gained, I mean, did science, doing very well. My second son, we get 30 in physics, 43 in mathematics, 35 in chemistry. But geography, 98. Economics, 88. And so on and so forth. It was clear where this boy was good at. My husband refused and said, no, he's a lazy boy. He came first in a common entrance in Oshu State. He's a lazy boy. If he, if he studies well, he will pass math. Shebong Logba first in a common entrance. And I didn't want to argue with my husband. Because the head is, uh, the husband is what? The head of the family. I went on my knees. I went on what? My knees. I was praying. It was clear that boy did not like science. It was very clear. He did not like science. But all the rest of us, we are engineers. My first son is an electrical engineer. My third son is a chemical engineer. Daddy, chemical, me, food engineer. Only one person in our house. Only one. And I was just telling pastor this morning, he's correct, I mean, he has finished his master's. He's done uh, his ICANN chartered. He has just finished his MBA. And he's working with a bank. Because that is his passion. When it was third time, I went on my knees again and I begged my husband. I said, Daddy, why don't we allow this boy to even try social science class? This is SS1, oh. No? I said, let us try SS1, eh, social science. The boy was so happy and Daddy said, eh, oh, oh, encourage him, go work hard. Emma Binu, let us even try it. He is getting 98 in geography, 88 in economics, commerce, accounting, 100. Let this boy try social science class. At the beginning of the third term, my husband finally agreed. And I went with him to school. The social science teacher was so happy. He said, hey, Two professors in engineering, among you, she, science. Muni, let him try this class. And to the glory of God, the boy did very well. And he has been doing very, very well in that area. Praise the Lord. So, now there are parents who behave like my husband. Who say, you must do one course. If nobody is able to convince them, I will say, do the course. You will hear students say, I'm doing medicine for daddy. I'm doing a pharmacy for mommy. My mommy wants me to be a pharmacist. I will do it. After getting the degree, they will say, mommy, here is the certificate. Now I want to be a musician. Now I want to be an artist. We are taught to obey our parents. So if your parents insist, I will say, if you have prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing is changing, I will say obey them because God knows best. Do you understand? God knows best. God knows tomorrow. God knows what you are still going to become. We have many students I mean, today, in the world, it is not what they studied that they are using to live. I hope you understand. We have many civil engineers working in the bank. We have many engineers doing um, computer work. Even people in Yoruba. I have a nephew who is in dentistry. I sit in Lofingen. So, the way the world is going, it is not so much the course that you do, 
but as the Lord directs your step, I'll stop here for now. Praise God. Okay. Uh, sorry, Ma, before you had to eat, let me just thank you so much, Ma. I just want to add a question so that our mommy, mommy, or manager will help us um, discuss it. Okay, because um, we have mentors in this camp who have been mentoring these children since they got to the camp. And by the grace of God, we have some of them who these children have uh, been able to talk to about one or two challenges they are facing. We have some people who found themselves, who have found themselves in a kind of home where parents begin to place demand on their children as soon as they get to SS3 and they are done. Some not even writing YA, but once they realize you are done, they begin to, because we kind of asked a few of them, why are you doing this, why are you doing that? I'm doing it because my parents are placing demand on me. They begin to expect you to bring money home. Yes, you see some of, some of these teenagers into Yahoo because of the demands parents are placing on them. We are not lost in and all that. And here we have taught them how to live the godly way and they want to stop. What can be done? How do they handle such kind of parents, ma? Praise the Lord. Um, yesterday, in, in my mentor, mentorship class, you know, I told them that it's good to obey our parents, as the Bible has taught us, isn't it? But when it comes to something that is not ungodly there is need for you to have a godly mentor your godly mentor may be your pastor your godly mentor may be somebody that is older than you and you know that spiritually that person is very sound in the lord and then uh, now we are talking of our parents lay much demand on us. So, if such a thing happened, you can go to your pastor. Tell your pastor that, Daddy, this is what I'm facing in my house. This is the demand that may, my parents are playing, I mean, placing on me, expecting me to go out there and work and bring money. Then, the pastor knows what to do about it. And per adventure, you don't have access to your pastor. You have mentor, you have somebody in the church that you know can help you out. You don't run to your peer group because your peer group will direct you wrongly. Then there is a place of prayer too by yourself. You too, you can pray. Part of what we taught you here is that uh, your devotion, like I told them it, your quiet time is the time that you, you open up to God, your heart desire personally. You know, there is a difference between family altar and quiet time. Quiet time is for your own personal time. That time you can go before the Lord and say, Father, this is the, the challenge I'm facing with my parents. He knows how to address it for you. I talk of your pastor, then if you have a godly uh, mentor, I mean, somebody that is higher than you, spiritually, that you can open up to, then your own personal time of prayer, use it to talk to God about your parents, demanding so much from you when it is not yet time. Praise God. Then I want to say something about, I want to add something to what mommy said about prayer. You know, mommy told us that when you, you are to about um, the first question, please. I've forgotten that first question. Education, education about your education. Okay. Eh? Komaka, we see. Okay. Uh -huh. So she talk of maybe you, you uh, go to your parent friends, then you can pray about it using that the uh, as an example. Then that prayer, what I want to add to it is that 
Do you know that you can, you also can pray that God will bless your parents supernaturally. And that thing that is impossible for them will be possible. And apart from that, God can raise somebody that will sponsor that education. When you pray, God can connect you to somebody that can sponsor that education when you pray. So those are the things you can do in order to receive your heart desire. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, I want to add to the question about bringing in money. Our mommy says we should obey our parents. Please remember, we are obeying our parents in the Lord. We are obeying our parents in the Lord. Now, I have a question. How many of you can do house girl or house boy? Here, raise your hand. If you can submit yourself to become a house boy or a house girl, so you are all too proud. That's what you are saying. You are all too proud to serve as somebody's house boy. I will tell you the story of a girl. The mother is a typist on campus. The father, very responsible. I told the secretary I needed a house help. Somebody who will be living with me and learning a trade. This girl had finished secondary school. Ofeka Wesi, the parents did not have the means. So she came to live with me. She came to live with me. I'm not her mommy, I'm not her auntie. She came to live with me as my house girl. Although I don't call her house girl. She learned how to sew. In the morning, I would take her to Central Market on campus. She was learning how to sew, and in the evening, she would read her books. I paid for her GCE. She did GCE again and passed. It was while she was with me, she passed GCE. She did jam, she passed. But she did not pass post UTME. I hope you are hearing. She did not pass post UTME. So we changed the institution to Adeyemi College of Education. I was the one that paid her school fees, 100,000 in year one. She was no longer living with me. I mean, how can she be in Ondo and be serving me in Ife? But I paid her school fees, 100,000. Every year since then, I will give her money. On our way here this morning, I was telling my driver, the mother does not call to say thank you. The father does not call to say thank you. This girl still called me last night, last night, before I came. I transferred 30,000. She's in final year. Only mommy, I need 70,000. I have gotten 45,000. One my better exam ni Monday. Koti son school fees. She called me and I transferred 30,000 last night. Where did it start? She came to me as a house help. She won't call house help, so really. She learned how to sew. Sewing yeah, loafing Jeuni school. All her classmates know that she sews. Sometimes she will say, I'm coming for holidays. They will say, ah, no, mommy, want to be chef for me? I quickly need to sew. I hope you get what I'm saying. If you need to humble yourself so that you can get help, you can do it or you should do it. I hope you understand. I lived with my sister like a house help. I lived with her after secondary school. A minimal for sure, ballet, everything. She would just, ah, a cool little kind of cabo, audible. I was the one taking care of the children. She even went overseas and left two children with me. One was two, one was uh, one. Yes, I was in part two in OAU. I was in part two. 
my own senior sister. What do you call that? Glorified house help. But today, am I a house help? When I was getting married, that my sister paid everything. Go, 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 Litimalo. She bought it, everything. Only kind they have served me. So you must be willing to serve people. Again, I will ask that question. How many of you are willing to do house girl or house boy? To get what you need. We are talking of wisdom. Wisdom. Children, do you understand? Please put down your hands. I'm praying that. Listen to me. Hello, hold your lips. Don't talk unless you are asked to talk. If you still think doing the work of a house girl is too below you, you have not gained from this meeting. Do you understand? If you think doing the work, living with somebody, serving somebody is below you, you have not gained. Because wisdom dictates what you do at that time. I'll stop here. Thank you so much, Mommy. Can we give our hands to our two mommies who have spoken so far before we continue? I need to tell them this. I, your pastor, I was a house in 1973-74 in Lagos. Five Glover Road, Ikoyi, Lagos. Is she rich on my head? Am I a house help now? May the Lord give you understand. Amen. Thank you, sir. Please, there's an announcement I'll quickly love to make before we continue. If you are in Molumba, Oster, and you have the key to any of the rooms, stand up. Only those who have the key, because it will be confirmed outside whether the key is with you or not. So this is not an avenue for you to escape. Molumba Hostel, those who are in charge of the mattress are here to pick up the mattresses, and you have locked them up in your hostels. So please, if you have the key to any of the room in Molumba Hostel, stand up. They are girls, I believe. Girls, stand up, step outside, and you'll be attended to. All right, thank you. Uh, I have a question here that I want our mommies to, if it, if it does not concern you, please take your seat and pay attention to us here. You are to drop your keys with the usher, not go to the hostel, please. Ushers, please take the key from them. They are not to leave this prayer, this all. Thank you. All right, I have a question here about how um, one can manage his or her emotion with parents who, who can so drain emotions for children. You know, the Bible also said that we parents should not provoke our children. Hello, you are not paying attention to me, oh. All right, so I have a question here. What can a teenager who has a challenge, uh, for instance, maybe this person still bedwets at, you know, an advanced age, if the challenge is not something the person is happy about, right? So that's a challenge. That's something that should have stopped since childhood, but it still does it. Or maybe any other challenge for that matter. And uh, the parents are using this challenge every now and then to torment the child. Please mentor, we need you in the hall, please. We need decorum in this hall, please. And at every opportunity, the parents, they use that challenge to, I mean, talk down on the child. Maybe even when visitors come, and the child is asked to yeah, bring water, they will start talking down on him, Mentioning the challenge and all that, and these things we all know can be emotional, emotionally destabilizing. How can such child undo uh, this kind of situation? Let me start with our mommy, mommy or mommy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, when you have a parent that is not ready to listen to your complain or you want to discuss with him or her but it's not the patient type 
please don't rush out to meet your peer group are you hearing me okay when you have such a parent there is still a place of your pastor or your mentor go to your pastor open up to your pastor that this is what is happening in my in my house or my home and my parents are not ready to listen so by that your your pastor knows what to do about it and also if you like some a case happened just recent about two weeks ago a, a, a one woman called us and told us about a daughter that is very close to my family what happened between the two of them so my husband and i went to the house we discovered that the mother is a hot tempered one and this girl too you know there is a, a stage a girl we reach enduring 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 that as at a time we, she, he or she will just fly up that was exactly what happened you know and we settled the case what we are saying now is that when you have such a parent that is hot tempered or is not ready to listen to your your word or to your complaint or whatever just make sure that you have your pastor tell your pastor or somebody that you know is able to listen to you and talk to your mom about it and also there is still also a, the place of prayer so my own advice is you don't go to your peer group you remember the story of um, absalom in the bible when he see cancer from the adults they gave him good cancer but he went back to, to see cancer from the peer group and they misled him so your peer group will mislead you make sure that you approach somebody that you know will give you good counsel and that can intervene into such situation and also when you pray god can or and another time is that another thing is that as a child you can call your mom after you must have prayed call your mom and tell your mom this is this this is the calm your mom down tell mommy please calm down listen to me after you must have prayed i know god will touch your mom to pay attention to you praise god thank you thank you ma'am addition praise the lord hallelujah um there are two issues i want to address here the bed wetting can you show you last song? it's a mental health problem and it has a solution there is something that is causing that child to do it and the person must seek help please if any of you or you know somebody who is still bedwetting don't hide it come to the organizers of this program they will guide you on how to get help i hope you understand they will guide you on how to get help now the other one is uh, if your parents use your challenge to abuse you irukoni iwolodo um, am i correct uh, atole ole alapa ma sise you know what i used to tell myself ebu okinso have you heard that yoruba word ebu kokinso when I was young, my mother, I mean, I'm a twin. If Taiwo and I, we offend, she will beat Taiwo. My mother will not beat me. My mother will look at me. My mother will look at me. Hey, mama, 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 okay. Ooh. if she had beaten me, Marty Gordon Lara, Jock on the Moa Wurami, a boot on Bumi, no. What has Kilo mean? Kilo mean, Gono. I mean, more consul, I think Echo's Guinea Monsoon. 
That was the last time I cried. Mo yara sense. Do you understand? Mo yara sense. The Ebu now made me walk to undo the Ebu. Do you understand? Instead of crying, I set my heart to say, Pe, one, Iri Ebu, Toma Bumi. She be Arishe, Larika. Abi, Teb, Arishe, Teb, Arinko, eh, Niri, so. So I now turned all the Ebus round to, I now walked to make sure that those Ebus did not exist. I hope you understand. So if there is a challenge that someone is using to abuse you, Olodo, Olodo means you are not passing. You cannot work hard. You cannot work hard. Olori be lion. I didn't create myself. Elenu be a nurezo. I didn't create myself. But nobody elenu rezo. It means you you talk too much. That's what elenu rezo means. It means you will now pray, Lord, help me reform my tongue. Don't make my tongue an eraser anymore. So you, sometimes the abuse can be used as a stepping stone to reform your character. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I hope you got something from what the, uh, two mothers have said. In fact, there was something that I, I really got. I was going to mention it, but thank God mommy mentioned it. When you say your parents are abusing you and abusing you, that's thing they are abusing you over. Eh, it means you need to what? To work on it. Because, hello, me, by the top of mommy has told me to, yeah, I mean, sense. So when my mommy talks to me, I will just look at her and just shake it off. Eh? When indeed you deserve the abuse very well by your kind of character. So, as a child of God, work on yourself. Work on yourself. When you do the right thing, there's no able. If I want a recall, so because if I read a book on my boy, I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Questions have started coming in, all right? But before we go to the questions, let's move to this um, last question from my hand. This is a very sensitive one. Uh, we are treating, working with our parents in wisdom. Mass, in the case where parents are separated. Hello? You are disturbing me, that boy. Where parents are separated, probably the father is separated from the mother, and either of them remarries, you know, and the child is still staying with them. So apparently he has either a stepfather or a stepmother. And the child is being abused sexually by one of the parents. And is known, this act is known to the other parent, who is the original parent of the child. And they're not doing anything about it because this thing is actually very common. We have heard of it a lot. What can the child do? Shoko Sakuro Leni, or what can be done? You keep telling your mother that my stepfather is abusing me. And she keeps telling you, keep your mouth shut. Sometimes we think it's, it's, it's more towards the female folks, but I want to believe we have some male folk that are also experiencing it. Your stepmother is abusing you as a man, as a teenage boy. And your, your father is aware. And they are not doing anything about it. And you want to live your life for God. You know that this thing is leading to destruction. How can we handle it as a teenager? Let's start from you, man. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> yeah. um, my sister said, your parents are divorced. Even when your parents are not divorced, it happens. I hope you understand. The girl, is, most times it is the father sleeping with the girl. And the girl will tell the mother. The mother knows. Usually a man that does that is threatening the mother. Uh, it's because you are not satisfying me. You are not doing what you should do. That's why I'm going to your daughter. Mumbu Ashiri any effect, you know, the father is telling a lot of lies to the mother. Or saying, Teba I will not give money again. 
you know, all sorts of threats. And the girl keeps quiet. It goes on and on. We read it in the newspaper. A girl will say, I've done abortion three times for my father. I've done abortion three times for my brother. I don't know who is the father of my pregnancy, whether it's my father or it's my brother. We have seen all sorts. Um, children, please listen. Do you understand what I've said? It is you that we say, I will not take this again. Your mother, if she's not supporting you, you are going to go to your church or the teachers in your school. Some children have gone to, to the police station. I hope you have heard. If your father or brother is abusing you sexually and your mother knows and she says, keep quiet. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't keep quiet. Don't what? Keep quiet. If you read numbers, there's a lot there that tells you a brother should not sleep with a sister. In this Bible, it tells you a father should not sleep with his daughter or stepdaughter. It's not just what I'm saying. It is in the Bible. They will tell you, don't tell anybody. Oh. Don't tell anybody I'm touching you. If what they are doing is correct, why should you not tell somebody? I hope you understand. If what they are doing is right, why should they tell you not to tell somebody? The moment they tell you not to tell somebody, it means it is wrong. Walk up to your pastor or your teacher or you go to the police station. But let me tell you, you are going to suffer. But it is a price you have to pay. I hope you are hearing. When you report, they will put the person in prison or whatever. But God is above. You are refusing because God says no. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It is because God says it is wrong, that's why you are refusing. And that God is on the throne, he will take care of you. I'll stop here. Oh. The Lord. Hallelujah. I think uh, Daddy told us something yesterday about a girl that came to him, him and told him what the daddy, the father was doing to her. You know, he told us that, he told the girl that this room, the room belongs to you. The room is, is your own. So, every night, lock up the door of your Lock up the door of your room. When he knocks at your door, you, you refuse to open. And you know that he won't be able to even shout because it's a disgraceful thing. As mommy has told us, if what he is doing to you is right, he will not threaten you that you should not tell anybody. And even the case of the police station, I read one online. It happens in Abe Okuta also, Ogo State. The girl ran to the police station when the father was, was abusing her. So there is nothing bad in uh, refusing it, refuse it. And any threat he, 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 he makes on you, make, just believe that that threat is just, is, is nothing. There is nothing you cannot, because he may say he will kill you or you will die. You will die. Know that it's a lie. It's just to create that fear in you so as not to tell anybody. It is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ma. Uh, I have two questions from the teenagers themselves here. It's close to what we are discussing now. So I just want to read out the two. So our mommies might just pick it one after the other because of our time. I mean, one per person. A child whose parents are not together and the child lives with the mother. After a while, the mother remarries. Okay? The mother then wants the child to change his surname to that of a stepfather. But he does not want to change his name because he feels uncomfortable with the man. What can the child do? 
That's the first question. Please permit me to read the second question. There's a boy and his brother is my friend. Unfortunately, their mother left their father and their father married their stepmother. This stepmother is very harsh to them and takes care of her own two kids and neglects them and always pretends to their father and does not want them to go to school, but if she wants her own children to go to school. Now, the Bible says we should obey our parents. Should we obey her by not going to school and then going to learn work? The stepmother does not want them to go to school. But to learn work. And she tries to convince their father that they should not, he should not permit them to go to school. And the father could agree to it. You know the way a mother can put it in the father's head. So what, what should they do? That person and the one who does not want to change his surname to that of the stepfather. Oh, Ma, you can answer. Ma. Okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'll start with the last one. You have a wicked stepmother that does not want you to go to school. Oh, that's a kosori daddy. No problem. What of your own mother? Does your mother come to check you? Even though your mother has gone, I mean, sheko kimbo juwe yini. Or a relative of your mother. She mama yin o or daddy yin o le tele basoro. There must be somebody you can talk to. Okay? Um, I would say, if none of this is happening, you, nobody is coming to care for you. You are in the grabs of that wicked stepmother. Stay. I want your loan kosher war. Shebo, I want your loan kosher war. They are not kishori buruku. Condition ba mi man kose yon lati kosher war. If that is what the stepmother is saying, e kosher war yon e inle tu mama bo wong mo ti e to kawi. Because God knows how to repay people. She may think she is doing evil. If you remember the story of Joseph, they sold him as a slave. From slave, he became a prisoner. Things kept getting worse and worse. It was his own brothers that sold him. Children, please listen. Your family members can do you evil. This, for the last two months in our church, we've been reading the story of kings. How a brother raped a sister, a grandmother killed her grandchildren so that she could be queen. Uh, different people, even a father sacrificed his son in the fire. These are family members. So don't think it's, it is new. It is not new. Your family members can do you harm. But you have to remain faithful in the place of prayer. If the stepmother insists, you must learn Isha Wa, learn Isha Wa. The Yoruba say, Idi Isha Ni Latin Money Lole. There are mechanics that are doing very well. There used to be one Olu Taiko, Ni Modeke. I mean, he was controlling professors. Today, it is Eja on the way to Ibadan. Eja has a very beautiful mechanics workshop. There was a rewire, me, not a rookway. Tolo London. I said London. Bende. Uh, Bende was a mechanic. He's in Canada. Please, if somebody says they are doing you wicked, don't, Emma Sunkun, go and learn that trade. But put all you have, put all the best into learning that trade, and God will reward you. That's what I have to say. Now, about changing surname, this one is tricky. It is a legal matter. It is a legal matter. The person that says you must take the surname, Ongulon Sonwo Skule, I hope you understand. It is not easy to take a decision. But that man that is paying your school fees, he has to go the extra step by adopting you 
officially. There must be an official document for you to change your name. When you were born, you were given a certificate of your name. It is not within your power to change your name. You don't have that power. Even when we marry and we want to take the name of our husband, we have to go to court and make an announcement in the newspaper. And we say all former documents remain valid. So if somebody is saying you should take their name, you say, sir, with due respect, go to the court, adopt me formally. Then with that document, I will present it in school. That is wisdom. Do you understand? That is what? Wisdom. If something like that is happening, ask somebody else for advice. It is in the process of talking out, you get good counsel. Enitobadake, tare abadake. Thank you, ma'am. Before we leave this, um, well, you know, sexual, whatever and all, there's a question here from a student. You know the other time when we were talking about when you are molested by one of your parents, speak out, go to police and all that. This person is saying that he has a friend who wanted to, who the um, stepfather nearly, I mean, was asking for sex, and then she ran to the police station. A, the policewoman kind of adopted her into her own house. And now it is the policewoman's husband who is trying to ask her for sex. The same thing she ran away from, she's running into it again. So what can she do? How do we, I mean, where, where is the place of safety? That does not call for noise, please. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. And so, and, sorry, ma, and she said she reported actually to the woman. And the woman said she was lying against her husband. That is not possible for her husband to demand such thing. You know, so. Uh, praise the Lord. You see, that is why it is very, very important for you, for you to really have cordial relationship with God. You know, if you have cordial relationship with God, you run away from your house to another person's house. What you ran away from is what you still met in that place. So that means that the next thing you will do is, if you are the type that is conversant in the church, you are committed to your church, then go to the pastor. Such a person should go to the pastor of the church that, daddy, this is what I'm facing. So the pastor of the church will know what to do. And per adventure, you are not uh, regular in church, or that, such a person is not regular in church or whatever. I think there should be, he or she is in school. If it is the principal of the school, or a teacher that you trust, that can handle such a case well, then you inform such a one. Please, I want to add this. Our mommy, what she said is right. But there's something else you can do. You can set a trap. Kinimoso. I watched a video during the week. This one is unbelievable. It is a mother-in-law that wants the son, her daughter's husband, to sleep with her. Did you hear it? The husband of you are married. I want your husband to sleep with me. I'm your mother. And the husband was telling his wife. Your mother is seducing me. He said, no, my mom cannot do it. Your mother is seducing me. He said, you don't like my people. I've told you, you don't like my people. You just want my mother to leave the house. He said, talk to your mother. So what that guy did, he called his friends and they hid a camera on the roof. He now sat down and the mother-in-law came and opened her chest. Hey. See, she was doing her bumble. 
the man said, go away, I don't want you. After the camera had captured that mother, the friends now came in. They beat the woman. They beat her. Her daughter came. They showed her the camera. And she was crying. She couldn't believe. If this policewoman says it is a lie, you can set a trap. But if you cannot set a trap for him, then run away. Oh, me, pay. Oh, T, they be see me. Christian, ma, I don't know that song. Mati, wasi me. You know, Christian, Mati, wasi me. You have, oh, T, they be see me. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you so much. I have a question here. Two questions, actually, from the same writer. Can you hold your lips? We'll stop taking questions from students by 12.05. Ushers, please take note. I have two questions from the same person. Question one says, what can we do in a situation where the parents treat the female children with care? What can we do in a situation where the parents treat the female children with care than the male children because they fear that the female ones should not become prostitutes, not minding that some male children join Yahoo or gamblers. All right, question two says, Ma, you told us to be a houseboy slash house girl in some, situa in some situation, but there are some people who exchange the glory of house head for their children. Those are the two questions. Who do you want to start, ma'am? Any of the two or the two, you can help us. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, let me say this. Hold your lips, please. For adventure, you cannot go for ourself. It's not compulsory you go for ourself. There are so many things you can do as a child to make sense meet. Now, I want to use myself as an example, even though in those days, maybe I look at, maybe we are bread and butter children now. <laughs> that is why I didn't say it that time. You know, my, my dad had two wives. My mom was the first, and my mom died very early in life. But I was still with my father's uh, uh, elder sister. This woman maltreated me, by the time I finished my primary six, the woman had died. So enter secondary school. One thing is, my father, we pay my, we bought, I mean, we buy books, but feeding money, I'm, I was spending for myself, to feed myself. When I enter into another class, you will buy, you will buy all the books, feeding money. I was, when I finished my secondary school, what was I doing then? Uh, this sharp sharp, I will go to the river, carry sharp sharp. There are some people that we buy it, unlike now, that uh, we have tipa or whatever, that we buy it from us. We use pong pong, they will measure it. They were giving us like a shishi at that time. That was how I was living my life till I finished my secondary school. Now, when I finished my secondary school, on my own, I searched for work. On my own, I set for work, and I was privileged to get job with Nepa Oshogbo then. So I had to save money. I saved money. I worked there for maybe like 10 months, like 10 months, and I saved money enough. When I got admission to College of Education in Laurango, I paid my school fees. In fact, I, I was done with first semester exam before my daddy knew that I got admission. So it's not only ourselves. There are some other things. There is a girl at hand in my hand. That girl just finished secondary school. He's teaching in one mushroom school. And they are paying her. So you can go for such. If it is sales, uh, sales rep, you can do sales rep. So it's not only ourselves because we know wickedness has taken over the whole place now. So if you know you are afraid of changing, there are so many other things that you can do as a child that will earn you money. Praise God. 
Hello. Um, you said somebody is exchanging glory of house girl. Let me tell you, even me, before I get a house girl, it is prayer and fasting. Because the house girl can exchange the glory of the madam. So it can be both ways. But the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Those who know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. If you know your God, nobody is going to change your, uh, your glory. And the Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. If you really need help, the Lord knows where he's going to open to you. He says we will not ask God for fish and he will give us snake. Is God a wicked God? You are asking God for help. Lord, I need bread. Will he give us stone? It's just like the case of the girl, Tosa Loso, the police officer. Talk of police officer, Tunfe Basu. I said, you will run again. God, I ask for bread. This one is not bread. Give me bread. You will not keep quiet until you want, you get what you want. So nobody can exchange your glory if you know how to pray. That is my answer. Now, preferential treatment. Uh, your parents are treating, are pampering female children more than boys. It is true. I told you I'm a twin. My twin is a boy. When we were in the university, I will get five naira more than him. I think I was getting, he was getting 55 naira. I was getting 60 naira every month. Meaning 60,000, this is 1980, 1981. I hope you understand. We will buy meal ticket, 45 naira. After the meal ticket, they would give Taiwo 10 naira and they would give me 15 naira. And they sat him down and explained to him, Ken Inde is a girl, oh my she menstruation. Shokurin she menstruation. Amarapad. Oh my she run. Ni aye banya okunri okin di run. And I pray none of you will di run. Ahem. Ken Inde ma di run. Okay? Kind of malo powder, body cream, and all of that. So, hello, children. It is not that they like me. I hope you are listening. I don't want to shout. Hello. It is not that they like me more than him, but they are mindful of the fact that women need some things that men do not. And they explained to him, and it did not affect our relationship. Till today, Taiwo and I are still the best of friends, and we relate very well. You have to show understanding. If you feel there's preferential treatment, go to your parents. Okay? Go to your parents and say, Mommy, why did you do this? Give your parents the opportunity to explain, and you'll be surprised the answers you give. Ikunsinu man fa hatred. Are you hearing, children? Ikunsinu o man fa hatred. It will begin to build up. And one day you will just hit that girl. You will just hurt her out of annoyance. Please don't bottle up your emotions. Rather, ask your parents. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. A round of applause for our mommies. They have really dealt with the question so far. And when you are done clapping, hold your lips. Please, Ma, what can I do? My mom's family did not allow me and my brother to see our father for the past 15 years. What can we do? It's like they are with the mom and they, they are not permitting them to see their father. 
Maybe they are separated. What can we do? Praise the Lord. Um, I think uh, what you should do is, I don't know, have you, ever, uh, have you ever asked your mom what exactly happened between her and the father? Now, if you have asked and you know the reason why they separated and why they have not allowed you to see him, continue to pray. I read sometimes about a week ago, a 29-year-old boy looking for his father on the internet. Now, God has connected him to the father, but the father is labeled to the relative, I mean the other siblings. So continue to pray. If your mom has told you the purpose of their separation, if you continue to pray at the right time, God will connect you to your father. At the right time, when it is time for her, if she's still alive, to introduce you to your father, he will do it by your prayers. You, can't do, you cannot force her because he, she knows why. But when you are praying, telling God that God, I want to know my father. God knows how to make way for you by divine connection. That is what I can say about that. Please, an addition. It is good to want to know your father, but the motive must be clear. Sometimes you are asking to know your father so that you will run away and you think they are maltreating you. Let your motive be clean. Okay? Sherry, even if they say 20, 30 years, don't know your father, by the time you leave home, your, your mother cannot dictate what you do to you again. My, by the time my children, they, I will just hear, Mom, I'm in, in Chicago. Mom, I'm in Florida. They are not taking permission from me anymore. You will get to a stage where you don't need permission from your parents. At that time, you can look for your father on your own. You understand? So, just bear it patiently and be praying. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, Mas. Listen to this question. A child who lives with her father who does not care for her, she is now trying to tell her dad that she has started menstruating, but she can't tell her dad. What can she do? Why can't she tell her dad? Praise. Say the father does not care for her, or probably the father does not give her attention. Praise the Lord. Uh, if your father is not giving you attention, you still have a, a teacher in your school or maybe the head of the school. If you are in secondary school, your principal, your principal is there, your subject teacher or whatever is there that you can confide in. So you may not be able to open up to your father because of lack of attention then go to somebody in the school, in your school, or even in your church. You can meet your pastor's wife. You can meet your pastor's wife. Ah, mommy, this is what is happening to me. And she will put you right. Praise God. It has, okay. You see, when you have a need, it has financial implications. And you need wisdom to handle it. You start menstruating. You need to buy pad. And pad does not come cheap. That's the truth. This is a matter that needs to be handled with care. You cannot talk to your father. Does your father give you food? Does he pay your school fees? Does he clothe you? If your father is doing all those things, then it means that wisdom, look, Mafiso. If your father is not doing any of those things, your father is not responsible for you, then the person who has been responsible for you is the one you will talk to. But if your father has been paying your school fees, please, let me also say, when you say your father doesn't care for you, we need to know what you mean. Your father does not watch television with you. That is not care. Your father does not play with you. 
that is a different level. But if he's meeting his financial obligations, he's paying your school fees, he's feeding you, he's clothing you, then he should be able to buy pad for you at the right time. Thank you so much, Ma. I hope you are gaining something. I hope you are gaining something. Because some of you are just busy chatting, talking, and we have the ones that are listening. See this one now. The lady in yellow. We are stand up. Praise God. Praise God. The instruction is keep quiet and listen. Please, ma, I'm in art class at senior secondary school and I'm in SS2. And if I get to the university, I want to be an actor. But my mom said I should go for nutrition. So what do I do? I think, okay. I think that uh, this one has been dealt with, right? I think mommy has dealt with it. You know, why do you want to be an actor? Is it because your friend wants to be an actor? You too, you want to be Because sometimes these are our parents. God, God might want to use them as a guide for us. It is not every time that your parents tell you don't study this, that I mean study this, don't do this, that they are wrong. Very many of us, most times, you want to go to art class because your best friend is going to art class. Not because you have the potential. All right? So when you have prayed, eh, and you have talked to your parents, you have sent your parents' friend and all that, and they still are insisting. Go ahead and do what you are asked to do. And see what God helps you to make out of it. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So we are not dwelling so much on that. That has been attended to. Okay, 10 more minutes. Okay. I think the questions are... Okay, to go to the house further. Okay, this one says about house gear. If someone's parents has no money and you wish to go to school, and you have decided to go and do housemaid, but they said no. If your parents don't give you the go ahead, if they don't agree to you being a housemaid, that what can you do? I think it's been answered too. You can pick up any other, any other thing. Any other thing. Teaching you, job. Teaching, you yes. Know you can go to school, you get anything. You can, you you can enter supermarket, be a sales girl, anything, anything. It doesn't have to be house help, okay? I'm uh, still on this changing of name issue. This person is saying, what if the mother wants you to change the name and they have taken, they want to take legal steps about it, but you as a child, you still don't want it. That, uh, <laughs> is there something you can do? Please, even when they have taken legal action, obey your parents. When you are old, and of age, you can change your name again. But while you are young and they have done the legal adoption, you obey. But when you are old, you can change your name. You've heard of people, Tonje Falano, Ogunshe Yi, Ogunshe Tong, who now become Olulano. Am I correct? Uh -huh. So you can change your name later. Okay, I think this one to now is settled. There are other things you can do to get savings to go to school. I think that's all for now. Let me see this. In this present world that we have, okay, this one says in this present world that we have, whereby fake pastors using the name of the Lord are present. When one has challenge at their home, and they go to their pastor that are fake, and the pastor give them negative response, what should they do? Fear of falling into the hand of the wrong pastor. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think that is why it is good for you to, to, to have the word of God richly yeah. in your heart. When you have the word of God richly in your heart, you will not fall into wrong the, uh, cancel uh, a pastor who is fake and you have gone to the pastor for cancer and he's given you wrong cancer my dear any cancer you are given as long as much as you have weighed it with the word of God and you know it's not in line with the word of God then 
you don't abide by the counsel of your pastor or whatever your pastor has told you. So let the word of God be your guide personally. If you have the word of God, the word of God can, can counsel you. And it's not compulsory. It's only your pastor that can give you help in time of need. You, you, you will still have some other people. If your parents are not godly, there are still some godly people around you that you can consult aside your pastor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, let me mention again, at every teenager's retreat, we usually, you know, divide every one of us under different mentors. Am I right? Am I right? You have mentors. You don't have them just to mentor you while on the camp. You have them to still keep mentoring you even while you have left here. So if you have issues that you want to discuss, you can reach out to them too. Those that I mentored last year, we are still in touch, right? Okay. I have somebody looking at me like this. And I have new mentors again for this year. Reach out to them, okay? And if it is something they cannot handle, they now have the initiative to link you up with, you know, a more elderly person that can handle it. I pray that the Lord will give us wisdom Amen. in Jesus' name. Yes, even yesterday when I finished with my class, one of them came to me and opened up to me. So just to buttress what she said. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. This question, I think, is a, maybe the person is asking for future sake because uh, I don't know if we have any lawyer in our midst already. Sorry, a mentor. Okay. Uh, the Lord bless all of you. Amen. You know, there are male mentors, there are female mentors. Of course, we have good male mentors. Everybody we have used as mentors are people we trust. But beyond that, you have sensitive issue as a male. Before you leave camp, look for, she's a mentor, for example. Uh, all of you, they are ladies. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Who are the mentor there? Raise your hand if you are a mentor. They are here, sir. So, look for the one you like their face. They are godly people. You are like, you are laughing again. Mentor are laughing. If the children are laughing, she mentor, that's your ministry. Go to them and say, Auntie, I need your number now. Listen very carefully to me. Hello? Why? There are sensitive issues you might not want, as a lady, you don't want to share with a male mentor. Am I communicating? Yes. So, all the people we have connected with you is a great lifeline for you. All this is you are saying, this is happening. You share your heart. And then from there, if they can't undo it, they know who to direct you to and how to guide you. I just come in with that, that as a lady, there may be sensitive issues. You don't want to share with a male mentor. Then you have so many. I think we have more uh, ladies than male mentors. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. I think this is the maybe second to the last or last question. Like I said, we don't have any lawyer yet. Or is there a lawyer now? Somebody who's already a lawyer. Okay, maybe this person is asking for. He says, My father is a cocaine dealer. He always sent me to the customer since I was young. When I grow up, okay, say when I grow up and I become a lawyer and I realize that my father is a cocaine dealer and the rule of law states that we should deal with cocaine dealer, should I sue my father and send him to court? I don't know why you want to wait till you become a lawyer before you... <laughs> uh, before you... Trade. Have, you, have, you have you tried talking your father out of that business. Anyway, let me allow mommy to talk. Hello. Hello. Hi. Now you grew up with your father. Oh, wo cocaine ye no fi run school. Am I correct? Oh, cocaine, no fit to joy. Now you now grow up and become a lawyer. I want to send your father to jail. Is the question correct? 
Is the action right? No. Even if you become the Chief Inspector General, sending your father to jail is not the solution. The solution is one, you, discover, you don't join him in the business, okay? You don't join him in the business and try to discourage him and above all, pray for him. If he gets caught, that's his business. But it is not you that we go and report him. Praise God. Uh, well, I don't know. This question is, if a woman is lying against the children of the father, like a stepmother lying against the children, I mean, they are her step children, right? And the father is looking at her, behaving that way, and is not doing anything about it. What should we do? I think that's the last question for the day. Praise the Lord. You see, the purpose of your coming to this place is for you to be exposed to God, to be exposed to the word of God, to be exposed to the mind of God for your life. If you find yourself in such a situation, what you do, you don't have any other thing to do. As long as you are still there and your father is still fending for you, he's still taking care of you, lying to you, I mean, lying against you requires your prayer. You keep on praying to God because there is no amount of explanation that may make your father to believe you because he's the wife. So begin to pray that God will expose the truth one day. And I believe that one day, God is going to expose the truth. Praise God. I would like to add to that. Um, I don't know the right proverb, but your character matters. Children, are you hearing me? Yeah. Your character what? Mm. If you are someone that misbehaves regularly, do you understand what I'm saying? If you are known as a troublemaker, then they can easily tell lie against you. But if you have a good character, you've always had a good character. If you have a good character, your character will show. What is he? He's an ole. So let your character be above board. I hope you understand. Let your character be above board. I will give you two quick examples. My junior brother, Idowu, he was such a troublemaker. In secondary school, there was a day uh, he was in a boys' school. The boys in his school went to beat up the girls in a neighboring girls' school. And they now put the name of the, trouble, uh, the people who did it. They put his name. Meanwhile, Idowu was sick. He had malaria. The only thing to save Enikwe, he was with the house master. At the time that thing happened. So the housemaster was the one vouching and saying, No, Idowu Adeko was not there. Idowu was with me. But everybody believed that Idowu was there because his lifestyle, uh uh, Tombangwanyo, Tonja, Tongpuro, he was number always there. Do you understand? Then, as a parent, I experienced this. I had a nephew, my husband's nephew, living with us. And he will be doing things. Can you understand? Somebody living with us. And I will be beating my own son. 
until the truth was revealed. When they were in the university, Kishero Kekereo, Oko notes, see daddy. Only daddy, Shayo is the one having girlfriend. Shayo is sleeping with girl in mommy's office. Shayo is the one taking money. Kishero Kekeke. I mean, in your town, Muwa Sinu Letiwa, Latin Ron Lowo, Ulong Puromomowa. But one day, one day, Oh, one son, Nule, oh, one son. My money was getting lost. The day they we cut, it was daddy that caught him. It was daddy. This boy, one Jimoto Walo way. I mean, I can spend hours telling you the evil this boy did. Adam Asokwe on one more Temini. But in Jokon O Toleke. Oh, daddy gone gone. And of course, things began to unravel. Things began to unravel. All the lies he had been telling, it all came to light. But the thing was, I knew the character of my children. After some time, I stopped listening to him. I hope you understand. So it became a battle between me and my husband. My husband will uh, uh, support his own nephew, and me, I will support my own children until the truth prevailed. So there are many scenarios where oppression can take place. But with prayers and good character, the truth will prevail. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of the discussion session. I want you to put your hands together for our mommies. We want to appreciate you, Ma, Professor Mrs. Tende Taiwo, and our mommy, Mommy Omonije. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. We have been blessed tremendously. There's a student that wrote here. I don't know who that person is, but uh, Professor Tende Taiwo said you should see her. Uh, it's about, I want to walk like a boy. I don't, I'm not, Income, I mean, sorry. I just want to. He's living with his grandma. Okay, and the income he's getting is not sufficient and he still wants to go to school. Okay, he says he stays at Campus OAU. If you are the one, please see our mommy at the end of this session with evidence. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Praise the Lord. Can everybody say thank you, mommy? Somebody is not saying it. Too. We should be grateful. Can somebody say thank you, mommy? Thank you, mommy. Rise up now. Rise up. Rise up. Now let's pray for our mommy that the Lord will bless their family. The Lord's great hand will be upon them. They will live to see their children's children. Are you praying? Come and pray for them now. Say, Lord, bless our mommies who have watered us. We pray they will see their children's children. They will live long, healthy lives to enjoy the fruit of their labor. To get to where God has ordained for them. They will be more celebrated in life and death. Are you praying? Ah, ah, some of you are still talking rather than praying. All of you praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. God is listening to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our mommies, I want to say that if you go back and this, you are going to throw the team back. The kind of wisdom that has been demonstrated in handling those questions are amazing. And I pray that that wisdom will grow in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, there are some questions that have been handled today. 
when they were coming up, I said, wow, the way it was handled. You are really blessed children. And I pray you won't hear all this and still be trapped in life in the name of Jesus. You will not hear all this and still be trapped in the name of Jesus. I declare my Lord and my God. Bless our mummies who have been used this morning. More and more. Honor them, O oh God. Carry them through life. Defend them. Water their families. Let your great hand be on their children. I call you who set up this ministry, my father. Give them great grace to see their children's children and live long to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Long, healthy life. Long, victorious life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. On behalf of all of them and the ministry, we want to appreciate you. The Lord will be your God forever. In Jesus' name. So, Pastor, what is the next? What is that? Uh,